the Jack Parr program, presented by Lucky Strike. At 50, say American. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes. LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. From Hollywood, Lucky Strike presents the Jack Parr program with songs by Trudy Irwin, the Page Cavanaugh Trio, Jerry Fielding in the orchestra, yours truly, High Everback, and starring America's new young humorist. Jack Park! Thank you very much. You're very kind. Hello. And to those of you who insist on being entertained for the next half hour, goodbye. <laughs> This is Jack Parr. Well, the, uh, the 80th Congress adjourned last week to return in the fall. I guess all the big comedy shows go off for the summer. <laughs> Thank you, third party. We, uh, we didn't get that cut in income tax, but we got the next best thing, a cut in income. <laughs> the papers reported this week that Betty Grable made $300,000 last year. That just proved her pretty figure ran into a pretty figure. <laughs> That's mighty good for a poor girl who only last year made only $200,000. <laughs> Don't feel badly. I'm just testing the network for Manhattan merry-go-round. <laughs> <laughs> this, um... This week... Hey, look, Mother, I'm at living. <laughs> hey, just like Fred Allen. This week, there's been more talk about presidential candidates. Senator Bricker came out for Senator Taft. Mr. Farley came out for Mr. Truman. And Governor Dewey came out for Governor Dewey. <laughs> From the sports pages, I learned that the Brooklyn Dodgers won their 13th game in a row. They're so far ahead in the National League that next week they start playing football. <laughs> I've also been reading a great deal about Hawaii becoming the 49th state. This means the flag will now have... 48 stars and a pineapple. <laughs> Can you imagine the senator from Hawaii getting up in Congress and saying, Aloha, you all! Now, uh, see here, Senator Averbank. Speak up, son. Speak up. I'm from the South. The South Pacific, that is. I come from a long line of real Hawaiian aristocracy. One of the first settlers, huh, Senator? Yes, sir. My, my ancestors came over on a surfboard. But I came to Washington by Pullman. I slept in Aloha first. Aloha, that is! <laughs> Now, uh, now look, Senator. That's a joke, son. That's a real hold of Lulu, Lulu. <laughs> You're from the uh, southern part of Hawaii. Well, son, if I lived any further south, I'd be treading water. <laughs> I was elected by the hula vote, you know. I promised them two ukuleles in every garage and a leilani in every pot. <laughs> You, uh, you say you were elected by the hula dancers, Senator? Yes, son. The next session of Congress to show my appreciation? Yes. I'm putting a motion before the house. <laughs> Goodbye, son. Hello, that And now here's our lovely singer, Trudy Irwin. Trudy has been singing beautifully since she was two years old, and I see no reason why she should stop now. Trudy? <laughs> Yes, it's 
see the difference it makes. I'm half myself without your kisses. One more night of doing without him will drive me crazy. Won't you make me smile again? Won't you? Just the word is all that it takes. Your hello will let me know that we're the same as we used to be. Oh, ain't you ever coming back to me? This past week, we've had record-breaking heat. In fact, the heat has been so bad, it's driven people out of the city to the resort, where the prices have driven them back to the city. <laughs> yes, this is real vacation weather. Most of us are familiar with vacations. That's where you get third-degree sunburn, sunstroke, poison ivy, snake bite, mosquito bite, and seasickness. And when it's all over, you say, we must remember to do this again next year. <laughs> Last summer, I spent my vacation in one of our beautiful national parks. You've seen them. As you drive in, there's a big sign that says, No smoking, no hunting, no fishing, no camping, no picnicking. This is your national park. Have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the time of the year when everybody takes a vacation. Where do people go? Why do they go? And when they get there, do they enjoy themselves? Let's ask a few people. You say, what is your name? My name is Herbert Dank. I live at 242 South Main Street, and the category I'd like to talk about is famous people. <laughs> Look, friend, I'm not Phil Baker. I'll admit the front of my suit's a little wrinkled, but uh, it's not an accordion, you see. Oh, I'm sorry. You look just like Phil Baker to me. You know, I've never seen him. <laughs> Let's turn to page 16. By that time, you've gone. Look, Mr. Dank. All I want to know from you is, what are your plans for a vacation? Well, this summer, I'm getting married. My vacation is also going to be my honeymoon. Well, congratulations, Mr. Dank. So you've decided to enter the blessed state of community property. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, the wedding is next week, and then we're all going up to Niagara Falls. All going? Yes, there's me, my bride, and her mother. Wait a minute, you're going on a honeymoon with your wife and your mother-in-law? Yeah, ain't I lucky? At the last minute, they decide to take me along. <laughs> oh. That makes uh, three of you. Anybody else? Well, naturally, my mother. Naturally, I see. <laughs> It's your line. Read anything you want. Yeah. The one with the pink centers are now. Take one of those. What fun we'll have there. All the mothers just think in the evenings we can play bridge. Thank you, Herbert Dank. Please stay after the program. I'd better have a little talk with you. Well, so much for a vacationer who is just starting out. Now, let's see if we can find someone who has already been on a vacation. You, madam, uh, you're here to tell us about your vacation. Would I be here if Howard Hughes was throwing a party? <laughs> hey, hey, you want to see my son, boy? Please, uh... 
Please, madam, we're on the air. You might embarrass the Middle West to see. <laughs> now, uh, just where did you go on your vacation, miss? Or is it missus? I got an important date Wednesday night. I'll let you know. <laughs> As for my vacation, I went to Happy Harold's Heavenly Hilltop Hideaway and Gas Station. <laughs> Sounds like a lovely place for a vacation if you're Buick. Believe you me, never again. <laughs> That food, I almost got sick. But there was one constellation. What was that? <laughs> there was enough penicillin in the moldy bread to cure anything. <laughs> well, food isn't everything. Didn't they have sports there, swimming or tennis? Tennis? Hump. May I... Uh, <laughs> may I ask why the hump? You should have seen the tennis court at Happy Harold's. It was on the side of the hill. <laughs> On the side of a hill, they must have been very dangerous. Oh, no, they strap you in. <laughs> I can uh, just see you playing mixed doubles with another girl and two mountain goats. <laughs> then, in summing up, you would say that you didn't have a good time on your vacation. Believe me, it was a fiasco. It wasn't worth the $14 the two weeks cost me. And besides, I didn't meet one fella of marriageable age. Oh, that's too bad. Say, Jackie, maybe you'd like to take me to dinner tonight. I'd rather not. I hate to eat alone. <laughs> Thank you, and good night. Lucky Strike presents... The Man Who Knows. The independent tobacco expert. Who knows from his own experience at the auctions what kind of tobacco is bought by the makers of Lucky Strike? Fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. And what kind of tobacco do the makers of Lucky Strike buy? Lucky Strike presents... The Man Who Knows. The tobacco auctioneer. Mr. John Cummins of Cynthiana, Kentucky, sells on the average of 4 million pounds of tobacco a year. Recently, he said... I've sold tobacco at the auction for over 19 years. In all that time, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine, good-tasting tobacco. Tobacco that's got quality, real quality. I've smoked Lucky myself for 22 years. Yes, the man who knows. Experts like Mr. Cummings can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, mild tobacco. Remember, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco means real, deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully fat, so free and easy on the draw. <laughs> Friends, the other day I bumped into an old buddy of mine from the Army, Jack Parr. Uh, like most veterans, he... Oh, why don't you tell it, Jack? All right, hi. Like most veterans, I was a member of the 4-H Club. Healthy, hale, hearty, and homeless. <laughs> but with me, the situation was even worse because I wanted to get married. At the moment, I was living in a garage, but if I took in a wife, it meant evicting my Oldsmobile. <laughs> Naturally, it was a tough decision because I knew my Oldsmobile longer... But, and besides my, uh, and besides my fiancé wasn't hydromatic. <laughs> but I was lucky. A lot of veterans haven't even got garages. They have to live in their automobiles. In fact, yesterday I heard one veteran's little kid say to another, gee, my pop must be doing swell now. Tomorrow we're moving out of our Chevrolet into a Cadillac. <laughs> but getting back to my case, why couldn't I get a home to live in? Well, I bought a lot, and one day my fiancé and I went out there to meet with the contractor. Well, uh, here it is, Miriam, our own little lot. How do you like it? Well, it's, it's fine, Jack, but isn't it a rather odd shape? Six feet wide and 220 feet long? <laughs> well, it was originally intended to be a bowling alley. Hmm. I wonder if Sears Roebuck has any long, thin furniture. Oh, uh, look, dear, there's Mr. Newbold, our contractor. Ah, there you are, you two little lovebirds looking over your lot, huh? Well, what do you think of it? Well, 
Look at it this way. You're stuck with it. Dear, maybe we'd better give this whole thing up. Well, it's all right for you, Jack. You can go back to that garage. But I'm tired of living with Mother in that all-night movie. <laughs> well, now, let's get down to business. Now, the cottage you need would be about 1,200 square feet, and at $13 a foot, that'll come to about $18,000. But, but I'm a veteran. The GI loan will only let me build up to $10,000. Hmm. Well, in that case, folks, case, folks I'll tell you what to do. Uh, you get, I'll tell you how to get material cheaper. Instead of a house... Uh, build a cocktail lounge. Well, I don't think so. When I go to work in the morning, I, I'd hate having to kiss a bartender goodbye. Well, then there's only one thing to do. We'll have to reduce the size of the house by cutting the plans in half. Now, let's see. If we cut them through here, we lose the extra bedroom, the dining room, and uh, half of the bathtub. Half of the bathtub? Yes. Uh, which faucet do you like better, the hot or the cold? <laughs> Really, Mr. Newbold, there doesn't seem to be much left. My dear lady, what do you expect for $10,000? A home? <laughs> well, even though the place would be awfully small cut in half, I was desperate. I took the plans to the bank to get a GI loan. The banker was very nice about it. He gave me no argument at all. He simply said, No! <laughs> I got fighting mad. I swore I'd never put another dollar in that bank and withdrew the one I'd put in already. <laughs> but I realized I'd never get a loan from any bank unless I could find a contractor who'd build cheaper. But then I found a contractor who was supposed to build cheap. Harry Bockbeagle, the building maniac. <laughs> But, Mr. Bockbeagle, how come you alone of all the contractors can build so cheaply? Well, I'll tell you, son, I can build cheap by just making a few substitutions in the materials. Take the plumbing, for instance. Now, copper plumbing is hard to get and very expensive, so we use a substitute. What do you use for a substitute? The washroom at the public library. <laughs> <laughs> but they have signs all over the library. Silence, please. What about it? I like to sing in the tub. No, I tell you, I, I prefer my own bathroom. Oh, all right. But remember, we're trying to keep the cost down to $8 instead of uh, $13 a foot. Well, you said there were other substitutions, too. Well, yeah. For instance, there's a cost of wiring. I've got a device called the Harry Bot Beagle System that completely eliminates electrical wiring. What is it? Candles. <laughs> Look, uh... Mr. Bockbeagle, I hate to sound difficult, but uh, how can I plug my electric razor into a candle? Well, I was just going to tell you, get one with foot pedals. <laughs> but now, now we come to where we really save money. Heating. You know, heating. We don't use a furnace. We leave a large opening in the roof so that all day long the health-giving sun can pour in. But uh, how do we keep warm at night? By running around swatting the flies that poured in with the sun. <laughs> So this is the Harry Bockbeagle uh, system of building houses. Cheaper, I see. Look, friend, what would you charge to build me a park bench? Oh, not much, providing, of course, I can make a few substitutions, like, let's say, the Bockbeagle... Thank uh, you, and goodbye. Uh... I was at the end of my rope. In a last attempt, I went to see the Veterans Committee, but there was no one there. They were all out looking for a place to live. <laughs> then a miracle happened. I saw an ad, Cottage for Rent. I raced over there. Well, I think it'd be kind of nice to rent my house to a couple of newlyweds. Yes, you can have it. You've made me just about as happy as a newborn civilian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, you know, you're not only being kind of newlyweds, but you're also helping a veteran. Wait a minute. He's a veteran? Yes, I am. Then I can't rent the house to you. Why not? So many people have to rent homes. You're a veteran. You can get a GI loan and build one. Oh, well, Eisenhower told me there'd be times like this. <laughs> one of the most talented people I've ever met is our young orchestra leader, Jerry Fielding. Jerry makes all our arrangements, and incidentally, he's a very brave young man. He doesn't use a baton. He conducts the orchestra with his bare hands. <laughs> All this week, Jerry has been bending over a hot arrangement of the Arkansas Traveler. Why did you pick this tune, Jerry? Are you from Arkansas? Nope. Ever, uh, <laughs> ever been in Arkansas? Nope. Got any friends in Arkansas? Nope. 
Then you must be interested in Arkansas. Nope. Well, no wonder you're going to play the Arkansas track. Go ahead, Jerry. Wonderful, Jerry, wonderful. Friends, let's face it, there's a... No encores, please, on radio. There's a crisis in women's fashions today. Style leaders have decreed that women's dresses are to be at least six inches longer. First, dresses went down below the knee, then below the calf, and now down to the ankle. Soon they may be covering their shoes. In that case, will women start wearing open-toed dresses? (laughs) But women, of course, have taken the whole thing to heart. Some are for and some are against long dresses. Tonight, in an effort to look behind the skirt question, we have asked two representative women to give us their views. First, speaking for long skirts, Mrs. Rodney Van Crethney the third, who says, I think long skirts are just simply scrumptious. <laughs> you may kiss me if you like. No, thank you. I just had lunch. <laughs> And now speaking against long skirts, we hear from Miss Phoebe O'Rourke, who says... I speak from experience, and believe me, the only thing you can pick up with a long dress is dust. (laughs) Thank you. That was Miss Phoebe O'Rourke at 129 pounds wearing purple trunks. Uh, Ladies, our debate is now officially open. Mrs. Van Crevney, you wish to speak? Yes. I think that long skirts are the greatest fashion development in the last ten years. They make a woman's contour so slender and so streamlined. And besides, I'm terribly bow-legged. Well, uh, 
That's one point of view. Mrs. O'Rourke, you have your hand up, and uh, did you wish to say something, or are you just drying your nail polish? Well, I certainly do wish to speak. Do you know what would happen if my boss called me in for dictation and I was wearing a long skirt? What? Nothing. He'd give me dictation. <laughs> My dear Miss O'Rourke, you're a secretary. Would that be so bad? Well, sure. He'd find out I can't take dictation. I've been with him five years. <laughs> now, ladies, let's not get off the subject, please. I think Miss O'Rourke's argument is ridiculous. <laughs> Short skirts are passe. Now take this long dress I'm wearing. It's the very latest thing. Yeah, I noticed. Is that a buckle you're wearing or can't you help it? <laughs> Please, Miss O'Rourke, we're discussing length, not width. <laughs> After all, she should talk. Look at her wearing Bobby socks to a broadcast. <laughs> Mrs. Van Crevney, lots of women wear Bobby socks. With a garter belt? <laughs> well, it's too bad they ain't making dresses longer on top so they'd cover that big mouth of yours. <laughs> Whoa, I must say of all the outlandish people. Is that so? I'll have you know my landish is not any more than yours is. <laughs> Ladies, please, there are men in the audience. <laughs> Miss O'Rourke, you are nothing but a peasant. Ah, go on. Your mother wears army shoes. <laughs> ladies, I insist she now that you... She started it. She's a snob. I'm a snob. See, she admits it. Now, ladies, please. <laughs> Try acting like gentlemen or musicians or something, but do something. <laughs> For. Yes, who asked you to Well, I'm only trying to... Ain't that just like a man? We're trying to carry on a quiet conversation, and he starts to yell. Yes, come outside, darling, where we can continue our nice, quiet chat. Just a minute. What about the length of dresses? Ah, wear them any way you like. <laughs> Jack Powell will be back in just a moment, but first, Lucky Strike presents The Man Who Knows. American. The Man Who Knows. The Tobacco Warehouseman. Mr. George Webster, Tobacco Warehouseman of Durham, North Carolina, said not long ago, At market after market, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine tobacco. The Man Who Knows. The tobacco auctioneer. Mr. Percy Joyner, veteran tobacco auctioneer of Lewisburg, North Carolina, said recently, I've seen the makers of Lucky's buy ripe mild leaf. That's why I've been a Lucky Strike smoker for 16 years. And so it goes with a man who knows, the tobacco expert. Remember, fine tobacco is what counts in the cigarette. And LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, Smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Tune in next week to the Jack Parr Show with Trudy Irwin, the Page Cavanaugh Trio, Jerry Fielding in the orchestra, and yours truly, High Aberback. Jack Parr is under contract to RKO, and his latest picture can be seen as... as, as can be seen as... A, Jack, where can your latest picture be seen? On my mother's dressing room table. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Don't forget, friends, for the top two radio entertainment, set your dial to NBC Wednesday night for that thrilling newspaper drama, The Big Story. And on Saturday night, don't miss your hit parade with Martha Tilton, the Pied Pipers, and your hit parade special guest, Nick Hanks. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.